a YouTube. Finally got one of these. Squire BM Jaguar in an awesome surf green. So now we can finally do a video series on modifying one of these, which has been requested quite a bit since I've done my Mustang videos. This time around the modifications will be a bit more complicated and it's definitely a step up from doing the Mustang. It's going to require some rounding, some more wiring kind of mods. But yeah, I'll go through what I'm planning to do. The biggest mod that I've decided to do is install humbuckers and I'm going for the Seymour Duncan JB and Jazz. Secondly, I'll be replacing the bridge with the Tunematic since a lot of people were asking how to do that in my last series of videos. Um, I'm going to be modifying the control plate to be more like my other Jaguar. So it'll have a three-way mini toggle and the sliders are just going to be used for coil splitting. Um, instead of going the Cobain route of using two volumes and a tone, I'm going to keep these two, but instead of using the tone as a tone, I'm going to be changing them both to be volumes, one for each pickup, so volume for neck, volume for bridge. And the roller switches are going to be used as the tones instead. The lead rhythm switch is going to be changed to be a series and parallel switch. The final mod I'll probably do is just to change the nut for a bone nut. Um, I'm going to keep the tuners because I like these tuners, they're pretty solid. So my first job on this will be to take the guitar apart and desolder everything because I'll be doing the wiring from scratch. Okay, so that's everything out except for the grounding wire which goes to the trim plate. Um, now, the first thing you're going to have to do if you want to change the bridge to a tunematic is you're going to have to get these out, these two thimbles which accept the normal bridge. To do this, you can just use, you can try to use brute force with some pliers, but you'll risk damaging the paint. What I do is I heat it up with heat up the two thimbles with a soldering iron and then try to pry them out carefully. Careful not to touch it when you put your soldering iron onto it because it does get hot, but that one came out super easily. So that's good. It also appears that this grounding wire actually went into this hole, so yeah, be careful. It's a good idea to heat it up with the soldering iron first. You don't want to rip it out and rip it off your controls if you've still left the controls as they were. So yeah, they're out. Easy as that. They came out super easily. I didn't have to use any force or anything just after heating them up. So that's a good little trick if that's what if you're wanting to install one of these bridges. Okay, now I'm going to have to take this to the shop to drill out bigger post holes to accept the new posts for the tunematic bridge and also route the humbucker cavities.
Okay, welcome back to my other office, aka the kitchen table. So we've got all that routing done, looks really neat, really happy with that. And also got the bridge posts ready by drilling the holes bigger and putting them in. So now we can install our tunematic. And what I'm doing today here is shielding all the cavities with this copper tape. Um, if you're gonna use this, try and get ones that have uh, the adhesive conductive as well, because otherwise you have to do a whole lot of extra soldering to make sure that everything is electronically connected. Um, so I've gone ahead and I've done a whole lot of the controls and all the cavities. Um, all that's left is to do the humbucker cavities and this cavity here. Um, it's a pretty simple process. All you have to do is cut your tape to the shape you want and stick it in. Um, make sure that all the cavities are connected. That's why I have these bits of tape going from cavity to cavity because to make sure that this is a Faraday cage and all the electronics are shielded from unwanted noise, you're gonna to have to have everything connected. Tricky to get into all the nooks and crannies, but it's well worth the effort. This really does make a difference in terms of reducing the hum and noise that you'll get from your guitar. Um, but yeah, it's pretty simple to do, just time consuming, but yeah, I guarantee it's worth it. Um, and it's probably easiest to do all of this now while the guitars fall apart and you don't have all the wiring to worry about. But one thing I'll mention is that I've got all these control plates with their components already in. I'm going to try and wire up as much as I can outside of the guitar just because it'll make it easier. Another thing I'll mention is that when you're mounting your Tunematic bridge post stud, uh, make sure that you've actually put your ground wire through the cavity into this cavity again, just so everything will be grounded. Um, simple thing, but it'll be annoying if you um, put in your, your, your bridge post stud and then realize you have to go back and put take it out again so you can put this in. So yeah, make sure you do that first. Okay, so when you're done shielding the body, it'll look something like this. Um, take your time. It's gonna take you at least an hour to do with all these little nooks and crannies. But yeah, it's worth it really in the end. So after you've done that, check that everything's electronically connected if you can. Using a multimeter, it'll make a beep if everything is connected. So, yep. And yes, obviously it goes without saying to um, shield the back of your pick guard as well, at least where it's going to be covering cavities, so around this area and around the pickups. And yeah, that's shielded and ready to go. It's gonna be hard to show you exactly how I do everything here, so I'll have the diagram and I'll put some copies of it up that anyone can use. Feel free to go for it. Um, I love doing the wiring mostly because I stuff it up, but it's good to stuff up because you learn things and at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. So if you're having a crack at soldering and you want to just do some basic stuff, maybe use a different diagram because this isn't the, obviously the standard way of wiring a Jaguar, but if you're handy with a soldering iron and you know what, you kind of have a little bit of an idea of what you're doing, um, yeah, go for it. Otherwise, also, if you're going to be getting a tech to do this for you, um, show them this diagram and they should be able to do it. But anyway, let's go. I'll get soldering and I'll probably, oh, another tip um, for your grounding bits of solder on the back of your pots. It's good to rough up the surface a bit so your solder adheres better. I'm just using a bit of 120. Um, you can use 
in the 200s up to 400s I guess. You just want to scratch the surface a little bit. But yeah, we'll get going and I'll see when this is done. Okay, welcome back. We finally got this all wired up and working. I've tested it all with the screwdriver and the amp, just testing all the pickups working, all the different combinations, and they do. Um, this switch uh, has a fairly thick thread, which is good because it makes sure that the washer covers up the hole that I had to enlarge here with the rat tail file. It only took me about five minutes to do, so it's pretty easy. Now, I'll put a link for this exact switch if you want to find it. Um, I've also shimmed the neck because it's going to need that with the tunematic bridge. And yeah, let's see how it goes when I string it all up and make a new bone nut for it. Now for the nut, I'm going to be using a bone nut blank, which you can see here. And I'm pretty happy with the string spacing that this nut already has, and I have gone with the Stumac um, string spacing ruler and checked that it's all good, and yeah, I like it. So I'm pretty much just gonna copy that string spacing onto the new nut. Okay, let's go through all of the upgrades again. So, top of the neck here, new bone nut, which I just finished making. Um, these rhythm circuit controls, that top slider switch is now a series parallel switch and the two rollers are now the tones, so this tone for the neck, tone for the bridge. On the lead circuit, we have a mini three-way toggle selector switch for the pickups and these two slider switches control coil splitting, so coil splitting for the neck and for the bridge. Um, on the control plate, we have two volumes, the volume for the neck and the volume for the bridge. And I also added in some um, little treble bleeds for each volume, just as another little added bonus. Um, a new tunematic bridge, because I just love the way these things sound and feel on the Jags. And of course, two Seymour Duncan humbuckers so we've got the JB and the Jazz. Yeah, there she is. 